And for anybody who doesn't really know how to open one of these, all I'm doing is sticking my spudger between the front case and the rear plate and just slightly prying outwards on the rear case, um, releasing the clips that attach to the front case, holding the case together. It's really intimidating in the beginning, but after you've done a few of them, it's really not that hard. The hardest ones are the seventh gen and some of the sixth gen ones, but the like the fifth gen ones, those come off so easily, it's insane. Okay, there we go. And you know, every now and then you do get a little bit of bending on the case, but really just take when you're getting ready to put it back on I just take my fingers and I just squeeze squeeze the case no no big deal okay so that's off let's go ahead and zoom in real quick there we go okay so you have the battery cable here battery cable battery clip now as I've said in previous videos a lot of people when they take this apart they will just grab the cable and yank it out. And what they'll do is they'll actually break the battery connector off of the motherboard. I mean, sometimes you can get lucky and you'll actually remove the clip and the pins themselves will still be intact with the board. And all you have to do is just slide the battery clip back over the pins and you can finagle it enough to make it work. But what I do is I just take spudger, hold the battery clip down, get tweezers, and then pull the battery cable up. You're disconnected. You don't remove the thing. Nothing's broke. Easy peasy. Okay, well, first thing, this battery is extremely swollen. Let me see if I can show you guys this. I mean, yeah, you can just see that thing right there. It is absolutely swollen, so I'm gonna have to contact this customer and tell them that they also need a battery replacement, or at least I, I recommend, I highly recommend a battery replacement. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's swollen. Okay. And that might also be the reason why we're having that other charging issue. So, remove the bad hard drive. Here is our Tarkin iFlash Solo. These things are fantastic. I will see a lot of people who buy like like the cheap knockoff stuff. And you know, I get it. This this can be a little bit on the pricey side, but it works and it lasts. I don't know how many people have gone with the other the other knockoff stuff and then ultimately end up coming back to this because it craps out after two months. So, you know, you get what you pay for. Let's get into this. this battery so I'm gonna start removing it now and I'll show you guys how to do that <laughs> okay so what I do in this case a lot of people will just stick a spudger under here and just rip the battery up and what they're gonna do is they're gonna end up ripping this hold switch cable right here there's adhesive under this battery and the sixth and seventh generations have that adhesive in contact with this hold cable. The uh, the fifth generation, though, they just have the adhesive here and here, so you can get away with just ripping it up. But sixth and seventh generations, you're you're gonna break your cable. So what I do is I start by just getting this under here, 
and just kind of slowly work it up. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but I'm starting to work that adhesive up here. And the goal is to work it up slowly. And then when you get it up high enough, you can try to remove the cable from the bottom of the battery. So you can kind of kind of see the cable here is stuck to the bottom of the battery. Kind of. Sorry guys, I'm trying to have a hard time getting a good angle there. But trust me, it's it's stuck under there. And you just kind of need to work it. Kind of run your spudger down here at the bottom. Work it off of the bottom of the battery. Now it's free. Now I still wouldn't just ram the thing home and bring it all the way up. Still bring it up nice and gently like that. There you go. Yeah, that thing is, that thing is fat. That is nasty. Okay. <clears throat> Get a replacement battery. Just a little bit. Okay. Now we need to release the battery clip again. Zoom back in. Okay. So again, people will just kind of take a spudger to raise this battery clip, and again, they'll end up tearing it off. So what I like to do: take a spudger. hold down on that white part, take my handy dandy little paper clip. There you go, that's all it is. Okay, now we need to insert the aux cable port back in, I'm sorry, the aux cable back into the aux port. There we go that okay now we insert insert the uh, hard drive cable into the new Tarkin board make sure make sure it's seated all the way you can do that by taking your spudger and pushing in on it at these corners. Okay, we're in. Put the clip down. Put your battery in. Down on the clip. And we have a restore page. So I will see you guys on iTunes on the computer. See you in a few. All right, guys. Got the iPod put back together, or actually not put back together, but have everything assembled to where I can start to restore it with iTunes. Let me plug it in real quick. All right, there we go. iTunes has detected an iPod in recovery mode. You must restore. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, sounds like it just reconnected with uh, Windows. It should pop up here any sec. There we go. 
and continue. Get started. There we go. 238 gigabytes. That is correct, even though it says 256. You know, I've actually had some questions about why it will only show 238 gigabytes if it's a 256 drive. Well, the reason for that one is because a computer and hard drive manufacturers have a difference in opinion on what a gigabyte is. A hard drive manufacturer will say that 1,000 uh, 1, megabytes equals a gigabyte. When in reality, it's 1,024. That's why it only shows 238 gigabytes on a 256 gigabyte drive. Next thing I'm going to do is change the name on this. Just call it iPod. And now I'm going to drop some music on here to test with. In the old school iPod classics, you have to have actual uh, music saved to your iTunes. You can't use uh, Apple Music. Let me find something that I know is actually on my computer. Here, let's go with Ice Nine Kills. I think I did that last time. Drop it on there. Load, 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 load. Okay, cool. Go back to the iPod. Eject. And I will see you back on the other camera to test. Okay. Here we are again. There we go. thought the scroll wheel wasn't working for a hot sec. So I'll choose our language. We have music on here. Let's test and make sure everything works, like the uh, the headphone jack. Let's play something for a second, test all the buttons. Okay, we have music coming out of both headphones. Play pause works, next works, menu works, and back works, and the hold switch works, okay? Everything appears to be working well. And I did message the owner of this and uh, he said he was fine with me replacing the battery, which I, I pretty much already did. I figured he would want me to anyway, so all we have left right now is to close this up. So, as I said previously, sometimes when you open this case up, you, it, you can bend the sides out just a little bit. So to remedy that, I just always take the case and I just press in on the edges with my fingers. That gets it back in just enough. Okay, case on, done. There you go. And that's it. Thanks, guys.